And I'm joined here with Peter Wayman, Freddie Mac, and Sarah Letts, Fannie Mae. And we're going to talk about a little bit about the trends of the inventory that's gone on in the last year, and maybe what you guys might be seeing in 2011. Really would help if everyone be quiet. Thank you. Um, I might just mention a little bit about the audience, because this is not a normal audience, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> you already know it's not a normal panel, but the audience is, uh, I, honestly, I, would, I am, without a doubt, I would say the net worth in this room is approaching a half a billion dollars. I would say that there's definitely several thousand homes owned free and clear. There's been, there's a lot of years experience here. And so there's, there's a lot of business potential and we're very interested in the subject, bulk buying. So I think, I think the first thing I'll say is do bulk buys really happen? Because <laughs> we're all suspicious, I can tell you. They really happen. They really happen. Yeah, there's okay. a bid, and there's only one winning bidder, so I, I think that's why it feels like they don't happen very often. But oh, we have to bid? We have to bid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the, Sarah, the, the quantities of inventory that you deal with, now, there's, is, are there multiple departments within Fannie Mae that do bulk, or is it just yours now? Um, there's one department now that's doing bulk sales, but we do two different kinds of bulk sales. Okay. Yeah. Okay, and typically, what is the... What is the quantity, let's say, that somebody has to buy? We're, we'll get back to this, but I'm just curious. What is the bulk buy quantity? Let's um, when it's a traditional pool, and those are typically the properties that didn't sell in our retail execution, and right. then they didn't sell at auction, uh, we feel like the best execution is going to be a pool sale. And they, those are typically 100, 200, 300 properties in the pool, and people don't get to cherry pick which properties they want. They have to bid on the entire pool. Okay. Now, is that... We, you and I had talked about a quantity that was something much different, I, I thought. Is, that, is, there, is there a program available for smaller quantities? Definitely. So, okay. And that's, that's what I specialize in, and, and that is when we, we sell, it is basically cherry picking, but it has to have more of a mission orientation. Okay. So one thing that Fannie and Freddie talk about a lot is the neighborhood stabilization strategy that both companies have, and we're trying to match up with what HUD is trying to accomplish with their six billion dollars they've put on the street with the neighborhood stabilization program. So I partner with cities, counties, land banks, nonprofits to try to uh, identify properties in our inventory and they can be anywhere in our inventory from not even listed yet to aged inventory and then we can pull together a pool and uh, the purpose of the pool is to really meet their neighborhood stabilization strategy. Does that reach the private investor very often? Occasionally, but not that often. Not that often. Yeah. Can that be, can that be changed? And if it if it can be changed, what would we what would we have to do? Well, so far, when it has reached to the private investor, it's been um, a private investor that has a good relationship with local government and is using government resources like redevelopment monies or the NSP monies, or okay. they're using some or some form of down payment assistance. So they're using some form of public monies to implement the city's or the county's objectives. Okay, I mean, I really think this is very important because you've really just given us a path that we, we can try and accomplish. Right. Because a lot of times, we, you know, we get a tape and it meets meaningless. We all look at 100 properties that never amounts to anything. So, um, Peter, what about on your, your side? Now, you're, and you and I have talked and kind of, and kind of made fun that, that you, you really don't prefer to sell all your inventory to investors. We're not the first person on the food chain. Right. I mean, the reality is it's less than a half a percent of our inventory will go through bulk purchases. Correct. Uh, that's because we start um, with the mission, which is giving the first look uh, to neighborhood stabilization organizations using the NSP funds and trying to take assets, and those are typically ones that need a lot of renovation, and put them back in the hands of people that are going to do something uh, with that using public funds. Then we, uh, we, we use the first look to put an owner-occupant uh, into the property. And we use that retail execution because the realtor community is excellent in getting the home sold. And as a result, 85% uh, of all of our properties will sell and close 
in that 90 to 120 day category at a very good retail recovery. And I know that uh, all of these people in this room are taxpayers as well. And you know we are under conservatorship and although we were called whales, I prefer to see myself as that Pacific life whale that jumps up and leans back. But our goal is to maximize recovery through best execution. And you know, it's understandable that the investors are interested in, uh, in getting the properties, and they are interested in best execution and, and dealing with returns as well. So that's why it is further down the food chain, mm -hmm. because these are properties that uh, you know, probably weren't suitable for retail execution, didn't work through the auction process, and made their way down to the, um, you know, to the low recovery side. The last, the last look group, the investor, okay. The rocks and sticks. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Now, um, what percentage of inventory ends up there? It's not, not a small percentage as far as what you and I talked about. Investors buy what percentage approximately? Well, I mean, it, it, the, tr the reality is that it's still less than uh, half a percent. Well, that's in the bulk, but I'm talking about bulk. overall. Oh, overall. investors, yeah. And investors are actually buying about a third of our property. Okay. So, so, I mean, that's not insignificant. Obviously, there's, there's a margin there, and it doesn't always have to be part of a bulk to make sense to either keep as a rental. Is there any financing on some of the purchases? Not from us. Not from you. The other whale. Okay. <laughs> Now that's interesting. Yeah, we have home path. Uh, many property, our, our website for listing properties and selling them via the retail execution is called homepath.com. Okay. And a lot of them will qualify for our home path financing. And then we have another product. It's a home path financing for the properties that need to be rehabbed. So um, we do offer financing. Now, when you say that last one, does that somehow include the repair yeah. cost? Yeah. Okay. Sort of like a 203K FHA loan? Um, there's some differences, okay. but yeah, some similarities. All right. Any quantity uh, restrictions there as far as how many loans we might be able to get? Don't know? Okay. I don't know. That's okay. Yeah. Okay. Because we're used to hearing the number four a lot, <laughs> <laughs> which, which for this group doesn't do much good. But, um, how about if we go to six? That, well, that'll be a 50% improvement, yeah, but it, you know what? We'll take what we can get. We're working on it. Okay. Well, that's good to know. Yeah. Um, no, but you're right, though, that the, the individual investor who, you know, spots a property that's, you know, in the center of their zone and that they have a great idea with what to do with is making the best offers, and those are the ones that are selling uh, to the investor. It's, it's hard to pull a pool of assets together to get that same attraction that one investor who's got a great idea with a property uh, and knows what to do with it uh, could, could yield. And I, I overheard you speaking with Tommy Williams and you're saying you're, you're expanding a little bit uh, some of the people that be joining your team, let's say. So is that because you feel like there's going to be more inventory? Well, as, as the inventory levels are up, you know, we started the year with about 45,000 properties in inventory and today we have about 70,000. Now, it's 70,000 in all phases. 55% uh, of those are in the redemption, eviction, pre-list phase. Is that taking longer now, too, by the way? It's taking longer, and about 55% of our properties are coming occupied. Yeah. Uh, so it takes longer to get people out. Uh, we have you know, probably about 15,000 homes on the market. Uh, but, uh, and, and then the rest are in the, in the closing process. So the, as the inventory levels go up, you know, and as the first tier, the first 90 day strategies are executed, when those don't work, then we, go, then we might move to a ballroom or online auction, uh, or it may still be an opportunity to extend the listing or relist if that property maybe has had multiple sale fall throughs or still is in a great retail spot or could stand to use some renovation and repair and maybe get a better recovery rate that way. Our goal is to try to figure out at any moment what will get the best recovery for that property. Okay. And we'll take it down the waterfall uh, that way. And what usually is the time frame for you to eventually end up with, let's say, even to the auction stage. Is that three or four months? 
Uh, it varies by market, so faster markets uh, would be earlier than 90 days, perhaps. Uh, slower markets might be a little bit longer, but we typically enter into a 90-day listing agreement with our brokers, ask them for a 90-day strategy, so we like to give them the 90 days to execute that strategy. Uh, we issue a last call on day 75, typically. Uh, because the last thing I want is the broker, after all that time and effort was put in, to come to me and say, gosh, if I had known you were going to sell it at that price, I could have sold it for you. So to avoid that, we give them kind of a two-week uh, last call to say, this is so that we won't have that conversation. Last opportunity, please sell it, and uh, then we move on to Tier 2. And what percentage is that? Uh, the Tier 2, you know... <laughs> I'm only kidding. I'm talking about the discount. I'm just trying to get ah, it in, okay. you know. <laughs> We got a list price on it. Okay, we'll just give it a shot and see what happens. Okay. Um, how do you qualify for the bulk purchases? Is there processes that are online? Yeah. Okay. We have a, um, we have a web-based portal now, and so um, a prospective investor would have to fill out a, a form, basically, to provide a lot of information about themselves and provide their tax ID number, and we do background checks. We're obligated to do checks on every prospective investor. And then if the investor clears the vetting process, then they are given access to this web-based portal so that when new lists of properties come out, um, they can access the properties and then they can also access our form of um, pool sale contract. So they know what the deal is and they know where the properties are and um, they, they're free to submit a bid. They're typically listed already with a broker? Yes. Okay. And the quantity can be can vary. Again, this these would be the bigger pools. Oh, the, the bigger, bigger pools. pools. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So everything we do with um, public entities is um, negotiated. Okay. So that doesn't go through the same bid process. You know. And lists aren't published uh, in this web-based portal. It's a very negotiate. Everything about it isn't negotiated. Okay. Well, you know, we have certainly some people in this room that might be interested in those bigger deals. What would be the journey of okay? They get to the website, there's the list. How long do they get due diligence time period and how, um, are they in California specifically or they're everywhere? They're everywhere. Okay. So you get a little California, a little Detroit, you're okay. going to be all over the country. <laughs> <laughs> so. So, so you're treating us the same way he does. You're just loading that truck up. Yeah. No, okay. All right. Well, there's you know, some lovely properties in Detroit. You know, the brick work is excellent. <laughs> Not a lot in doors and things, but the uh, brick is excellent. <laughs> the, the one thing Maybe that Maybe short I, on appliances, too. They're short on, yeah. <laughs> you could, you could is electricity it. important to you? <laughs> oh. Most of us will even deal with that if the price is right, but not there. Uh, not how about plumbing? <laughs> plumbing? Yeah, we do that, too. Uh. You know, it... There, was, there is something that I, I'll mention, and I know that you guys are not in the policy-making decision, but sometimes you have the ear of people, is that by observation, and we are interested in saving taxpayers money, probably handing it to investors to participate in the solution is a far cheaper solution than, than going to the NSB in the cities because it's a very different process and very more, much more expensive. So I don't know if there's ever any good word that can be put in for investors, but when we, when we watch the numbers that emerge, uh, there's just no doubt that they could partner with investors and save an awful lot of taxpayer money. So I don't know, I don't know how we cross over to that. Well, here's a plug for Tommy Williams. Um, well, I mean, they should go to the auctions. They can buy a lot of properties in a, in a specific geographic area by auction. They do it every day, we do it every day. Tommy does a great job, so. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he does. <laughs> and, and I would tell you that uh, even though that's where we go first with the, uh, the NSP, um, you know, buyer, uh, I think that's because of our mission, our government conservatorship and such. It's still not a high volume of properties, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, Which is interesting because you think it certainly could be with the amount of money you're talking about, but it, it, it isn't. I, no, it's not. Yeah, for, for us in the prior 12 months, we sold about 30,000 properties to owner occupants during that first look period, and then about, on top of that, about 5,000 properties to people using NSP funds. Okay. So it's about 5,000 properties for us in the last 12 months. Mm -hmm. So less than 20%. Yeah. Okay.